I'm back on Minecraft InfDev, and this was a way bigger success than last time. This episode, I've updated to using the Betacraft launcher so I can update to the last version of InfDev, which is Minecraft InfDev 2010-06301. Now we have stairs and dungeons, but the stairs kind of work weird. I had three main goals for this episode. One, find a dungeon. Two, make it into a grinder. And three, find diamonds. Anyway, I set out caving and to try to find a good place to strip mine right away. I thought that the diamonds not generating might have just been a bug with the version of InfDev I was playing, so I might be able to find some if I move out farther and generate new chunks. I also knew that the new dungeons would only generate new chunks, so that's even more incentive to set out, and that's exactly what I did. Eventually, I found a spot that I wanted to strip mine. After about 20 minutes of going through caves and strip mining, I found what I was looking for, a dungeon. It was the zombie spawner, so it really wasn't the most useful thing since feathers can't really do anything, but I figured I'd make a grinder so I'd have infinite feathers anyway. I also found a saddle, which is pretty cool. It was pretty easy and I used a fairly basic design, and after giving the grinding room an obsidian floor, it was finished and functioning. It's not super efficient because mob collision is on, and I only made the grind hole two blocks deep, so the zombies in the hole can prevent more from coming in, but that's a problem for future me in episode 3 maybe. I was satisfied with my mining trip, so I set off for the base. I got home and started smelting all the goodies I had gotten. I also took my first death suffocating in a wall, because I didn't realize minecarts were rideable now, and another one because I didn't realize you were technically on top of the minecart while riding it, so that makes you plus the minecart three blocks tall. After crafting a new set of iron armor, I set out to do two things with my wheat farm. A. Make it in rows so I wouldn't keep trampling my crops. And B. Make it semi-automatic in the sense that I could break a row and then use water to push crops to a collection point. That way I wouldn't ever have to set foot on the farmland. I came up with this rudimentary design, and breaking crops using water wouldn't drop seeds, so I'd have to break them manually. While figuring out how the crop farm would work, I put a saddle on a pig, and while trying to trap it in a pen, ran into some technical difficulties. The pig survived and I swore I saw him go into the mine, but when I tried to look for him later I couldn't find him. RIP to the pig and the saddle, you will both be missed. I patched the creeper hole, and I also crafted my first piece of TNT, and set off a controlled explosion not far from my base. The goal is to take this TNT hole all the way to bedrock. I also forgot that you didn't have to light it, just punch it, so that was kind of awkward. I went back to the zombie spawner and added an observation area so you could see the zombies spawning. I grinded some zombies and decided to set up an outpost area in the cave by the zombie spawner. I put a double chest down for all the zombie drops, and when I got back to base I had to deal with some sheeps trolling on my roof. I looked at this small lake behind my tree farm and decided, hey, let's build a room underneath this. I wanted to build it with a glass top so you could see into it from above, so I smelted some glass and gathered some wood. Then I started construction. The old water mechanics made it super easy to make an underwater room, and I made a wool ring around the glass top. Then I made the walls a striped pattern of log and wool. The wool is also white now instead of light gray, so it kind of looks a little cleaner. I took another TNT out to the TNT hole and came back and tried to figure out why the crop rows on the far side wouldn't get pushed correctly by the water. I decided it was because they were the only ones that didn't have water flowing on both sides of them, so I added water to both sides and sure enough, things were working properly afterwards. I started to make a gravel path to all the main parts of my base, and also made some stairs for the parts of the path that go up and down. 
but the stairs texture was kind of funny and their behavior was even funnier. And I found out they only worked properly when facing a certain direction in the world. So I had to make the staircase down towards the underwater room face that direction. I also began gathering sand and constructing a small fake beach by the underwater room. I then made a little tiki shack in the side of the hill called Big Kahuna, and I also started using my extra saplings to extend the tree farm into an artificial forest surrounding my base. I then traveled back to the zombie farm to try to strip mine further and after only 5 minutes or so of mining I finally did it. I had found diamonds. I was actually in shock for a second as you can tell by the footage. After 15 plus hours of playtime on this world I had completely given up on finding diamonds and figured they were just glitched out of this world or something. But I did and I found a whole 10 of them. After a little more mining I had some good luck and found 4 more, but my luck ran out. I went back to base and I crafted a diamond sword and a pickaxe, and I also decided to start going for all obtainable items. I had a lot of them, but I couldn't find a list of all infdev items online, so I started going off a list based on indev items. I don't know why mushrooms were even in this version, because they can't craft mushrooms too, so they're pretty much useless, but I had a lot of the items that I needed. After a quick roll call of all the blocks, I had figured out I was only missing the iron ore block and gold ore block, which were both easily obtainable, diamond tools, a diamond block, and in the other chest I was missing diamond armor, a lava bucket, both sets of stairs, a feather, and a saddle. It was also only now that I got recorded evidence of my crop farm actually working as intended. After that, I went back to the zombie farm to gather some of the items I need, specifically a lava bucket, a feather, and some cobble stairs. After getting all of them, I went back home and crafted some wood stairs, and then put everything in the chest. The wood stairs seemed to have the same weird texture thing the cobble stairs had going on, and I figured they just hadn't added a texture for either yet. Outside, I made a couple walls that I put two specific paintings on. I specifically wanted these two paintings because they've since been changed, and these older versions are the only ones with the old style. I went back to the zombie farm and did some mining and found some more diamonds. When I got back to the base, I made a diamond block and put it in the all items chest. Now all I needed was a saddle, diamond tools, and diamond armor. But if you remember correctly, the one saddle that I had collected so far, the pig ran into the mine and was never seen again with, so I had to find a whole nother dungeon to get a new one. I started lighting up the way to the zombie spawner so later me would have an easier time extending the gravel path out since I can't skip night. I went exploring and found a skeleton spawner, finally, which was the most useful spawner. Since you can't craft arrows, this is the easiest way to get an infinite supply of them. I also found a saddle for the all items chest, so things were looking real up right now. But there was only one issue. When I broke a staircase to the surface from the skeleton spawner, I had no clue where I was. In fact, for the next hour and a half of real time, I did nothing but wander aimlessly looking for my base. And when I thought all was lost, I finally found out that I had just been traveling in a big circle and I made my way back to the skeleton spawner. 
I decided to make it into a grinder now rather than later, and after that was done, I had to try to find my way back to base. By a stroke of luck, I found a dirt arrow I had made earlier pointing myself back to base. I finally got to base and realized I had forgotten my saddle at the skeleton spawner, so I couldn't put it in the all obtainables chest, but that's a problem for future me, because that's the end of this episode. My next video probably won't be on this inf dev world, as I'm going to try to switch up into other older Minecraft versions, but I will definitely return to it for a part 3 as I'm really enjoying this world and I still have some goals I need to accomplish. I need to extend the gravel path to both the zombie and the skeleton spawners, and I also need to collect saplings to finish the artificial forest around my house. This isn't even to mention the all obtainable items challenge, and at the end of the day, I want to finish this world with some kind of mega build. It's difficult to get creative with such a limited block palette, but I'll try my best, and if you have any suggestions for what the mega build should be, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, and that's it from me.